I'm here today with all my friends and I finally have the numbers for you that you've been asking me for. And it turned out to be kind of a shock to me too. So here's the numbers I've got that we're gonna go over. So many questions on this, so I, today I decided to let's work it out. Now I buy usually my sugar, which is white granulated sugar. You can get the sugar beet or the cane sugar, doesn't matter, I do both. I usually get 10 pound bags because I was buying them in 50 and then I started buying them in 25 and then I found that it's basically the same price nowadays. It's gone up so much. So let's go over some of the prices and let's, let me tell you what's been going on here. Now remember, when the hummingbirds come in, they drink and they leave and they don't come back for 15 minutes. So when you see a constant flow within those 15 minutes, those are generally different birds. And so they go back and forth, whether it's insects, pollen, nectar, or just flying around, and then they come back. So we literally have thousands. A 10 pound bag of sugar, which generally costs about $8, is about 22 and a little bit more cups. So let's just say it's 22 cups because I always use a little bit more anyways. Now 22 cups sounds like a lot, but for me, it really isn't. So here, at least, minimum on the best day when there's tons of flowers open and the birds are all over the yard working the flowers and foraging for food, I go through six cups of sugar a day on those days. That's not when it's raining, but that's on good days. Okay, now what I do is I make a half a gallon at a time. I usually make two half gallons and I put it in a pitcher and then I make another one. But I make a half a gallon at a time, which is 64 ounces. And on that, I use two cups, but I actually use about two and a quarter to two and a half. So I'm always using more sugar, especially in the winter. Because in the winter, I want to boost their sugar count up a little bit because they need more for their metabolism. You don't have to do it, but I want to do that. But just a little bit. So let's say about two and a half cups of sugar. In the summer, you don't have to do that because they need water. So you don't have to add too much more. I never would cut it less. It's a quarter of a cup of white granulated sugar and one cup of water. It's a recipe. It's actually not a formula. All right. So I make approximately on my slow days for the hummingbirds, I make three of those. So I use six cups a day. Some days, though, I do make more. So what it turns out, is I use, and you can look out the window and see them. They're actually, we've got like a dozen feeders here now in this one section and all over. So actually I use about 10 pounds every three days. Now again, in the winter, I may go through 10 pounds in two days. And that's adding up. So now you've got that breakdown. Now, it's 84 cents a pound generally. That's the cane sugar and sometimes beet sugar. They're pretty much now the same price. C and eight sugar, for instance, you can get 25 pounds for $17.68 right now at one of the stores. But if I shipped it, they want $8 and half the time they don't have it. Costco, I just looked up, has it for $41 for 50 pounds. That's 82 cents a pound. So what it is right now is I've been buying it in 10 pounds. We don't need a carry around, uh, you know, have it brought in and find places for 50 pounds, which we used to do, or 25 pounds. I still will pick up 25 pounds, but I generally get my bags now in 10 pounds. It's just easier for us to handle. It's easier to store. I can put a little bit here, a little bit there. And we usually keep about 200 pounds available at all times. Sounds crazy, but we have to because like today I did an order and they were out of sugar. Kind of looked around, I can get the small bags, but when you start getting the really small bags, a one pound box is really expensive. Four pounds is even higher. So they were out of the 10 pounds today. So we keep 200 pounds of sugar here about all the time. We may run a little under, we might sometimes even get closer to 100, and then I immediately do a big order and order more. Now, so many have asked me, how did you get so many? You know, I looked back, if you look back on the beginning of our YouTube channel, we really didn't start all that long ago with the hummingbirds. Let's say five years now. 
five, six years ago, I had like one bird, started putting out hummingbird food, and all of a sudden one, and then there was two, and of course you saw the videos probably, you can go back and watch it, of the hummingbird that actually had a nest on the window. Now when she built her nest there, and I was working in the kitchen, I was changing that feeder, there was only one feeder at the time. So she built her nest on the feeder and took that over. I don't want to do the whole story because the whole story is already on YouTube. But when that happened, I had to put up a second feeder, which was here, which means taking down the window, redoing the screen, and having a feeder here. But my one feeder has now gone to, in this one section, not counting my deck, not counting my garden, is now 12 feeders. I had to add on another two feeders the past week because I had 10 and now I've got a dozen. That doesn't count that I've got peanut butter cups, I've got the ice cream containers, I've got tons of dots out there everywhere they love their dots i make some of them will only drink out of the dots and then they'll leave so when you're feeding birds i think the main thing is try to keep as many feeders as you have birds you have one bird you only need one feeder but if you got four or five six birds it's good to keep more feeders out and separate them and a lot of times if you get a little fighter got a whole video on that if you've got i don't have any let's say here's the scissors i'm working on projects Let's say you got a hummingbird feeder here and you got one bird that's taking over everything. Try to put a blinder out there. So when they come in, they don't see. I can't see my scissors, see? They can't see it. Make up, put a place where they cannot see both feeders no matter where they are at the same time. Then all they can do is really guard one feeder and then you'll have more birds. But going back to the numbers, they built up by multiple reasons. We have a lot of citrus trees out there which they absolutely love flowers and it's, the, it's not the citrus they want, it's the flowers. So they come for that and plus they can sleep in there. It's a really good tree for them to dart into and the water pours on the tree but it goes on the outskirts so the center of the tree is dry. They like that. So they can sleep out there and then they've got the flowers and then they have as much food as they need and they've had babies. So they come in, they go, this is a great place. I'm gonna stay here, I'm gonna build a nest. So one bird turns into six. Now you've got six, and let's say half of those could be females. So you got another three. But when you have one bird nesting, then 10 birds nesting, then a thousand birds nesting, all those babies wanna come back and gravitate to the same place they grew up, and they know they've got all the food that they want. So that's basically it, but you wanted the numbers. And so what it is, is I generally use about at the minimum this is a shock was eighty dollars and that could sometimes be doubled a month some of you said oh i wish i had that many be careful what you wish for because it does add up if i don't put food out here they'll leave they'll go somewhere else now of course they'll come back if they can't find the food but if they find the food and your neighbor puts food out and they're consistent with food then they'll go back and stay there, and then you'll come out here, look around, where's my birds? And that's where your birds will be, at the neighbors. So you wanna make sure you have a couple feeders out, always have food in them, so check it out. When it runs too low, take it in, swap it out for another feeder, or wash it real good and put it out, and make sure they know that they always can depend on you. And if they can depend on you, then you will have probably as many hummingbirds as me and if not more and of course here in southern california they do live here all year long now not all of them some of them come through we'll start seeing them in another month or so before spring they'll be heading up north because they went down south and they'll stop here their forage and then they'll continue on their way all the way up into oregon washington some will go to alaska and who knows where else they'll go so we have a multiple numbers at different times we have a lot in the fall when they're leaving and they're gravitating south, then they come here and we could have tens of thousands, it seems like, all covered here. The trees will be black with them, the window will be black with them, you'll see all of them buzzing around. And thank goodness, since they feel secure, knowing there's enough feeders all over, they don't really fight. Occasionally you'll have the Rufus come in and he'll perch himself on top and decide that's mine, but you know, one bird really can't fight off a hundred others. It's too hard. He'll be chasing one off while the other ones come drain. But they'll try. So get as many feeders as you can out. And you should be able to enjoy this many too.
if you want. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Okay, we don't grow sugar, so I have to buy that. Bye-bye. Oh, my goodness, guys. It's going to be pouring for days.